we are going on the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Angelita Gonzalez, two three eight two five. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Corey Westmore is here on behalf of Ms. Gonzalez. Good morning. Ms. Gonzalez, would you please state your name for the record? Angelita Gonzalez. All right, good morning. And today's date scheduled for a sentencing on your client's plea. I believe it's a uh, show cause. Right? I'd say show cause. Yes, I apologize. Thank you. Yeah, she did not get the alcohol tether on September 11th as ordered. Yeah, as a result of her probation violation. So this court indicated five days jail. All right, so your client was sentenced on August 14th, the 18 months probation for her plea to an amended charge of operating on visibly impaired. There was a, a probation violation, which results in technical violations one, two, and three. Two of the tests that your client took for drug testing were diluted samples, and the third test was positive for alcohol. So a, a violation was scheduled, <clears throat> at which point your client pled guilty to the probation violation. This court indicated five days jail. We were suspending that jail until November 6th at 9.45 a.m., and she was having an alcohol tether for 30 days, which correct, she apparently didn't get the alcohol tether on September 11th, and therefore there was a show cause that was issued for her failure to have the alcohol tether. And so, counsel, what's happening with the show cause? Yes, Your Honor, at this time, uh, my client is prepared to uh, plead guilty with an explanation. Ma'am, please raise your right hand. Are we swear from the testimony about to give this man to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. And so, ma'am, you um, are before this court to show cause why you should not be held in contempt of court or violating this court's order. And as to the allegation you violated this court's order by failing to have the alcohol tether administered on September, by, on September 11th as ordered, how do you plead? Guilty. You understand that you do have the right to have a contested hearing in this matter. Yes. And by entering into a plea, <clears throat> you will not have that contested hearing. Yes. Has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. You understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea? Yes. You understand that this court could sentence you to jail? Yes. And knowing all that, you want to continue with your plea? Yes. <clears throat> and counsel, if you can please to your client. Sure. Ms. Gonzalez, are you currently on probation through the White House District Court? Yes. As a term and condition of your probation, were you to uh, have the alcohol tether installed on September 11th? Yes. And did you have that installed? No. And you understand that's a violation of your probation? Yes. Satisfied, Judge. All right. The court, well, the court will also indicate you, you understand that's a violation of this court's sentence on your probation violation hearing. Yes. All right. The court is satisfied that he is knowing voluntary and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea to the um, show cause violation. And Counsel? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, my client's extremely apologetic. Uh, plain and simple, she just doesn't have the money. She, she's been out of work for uh, several weeks now. She's on disability. She, 30 months. She receives $400 a month, and that's clearly not even remotely close to pay her bills whatsoever. Uh, she's not trying to deceive this court in any way. She has uh, scheduled surgery for October 13th. At that point, she will be able to return back to work within a week or two tops. Um, she understands. She she's taking responsibility for it. She did plead guilty, but uh, simply put, she doesn't have money for it. So uh, I, I would just uh, ask for leniency on her behalf. She's in a bad spot right now. She can't she can't work. She can't earn money. She can't pay for it. So. Uh, 
taking that into account, I would ever just be asking for leave to see if we have any missing bells. So, ma'am, if you're receiving less than what your monthly obligations are, how are you supporting yourself? I'm barely, I'm doing it with the $400 that I'm getting, that I just started getting from the state last month. And you don't have any family or friends that are helping you out? Not at all. It's just me. And did you, at any point when this court ordered you to get the tether, did you raise that issue? Because I don't recall you raising that issue. Um, when we spoke, Kathy was like working and I said no. I'm sorry? When the last time I was here, we're well, not here, but on the Zoom, um, I did, I did in the last one. Yeah, not this past, but previous month. I did let me know that I am not working at the time. I also didn't know that the tether, like I was going to have to pay like weekly or have a specific amount due that day until when um, Natalie sent over the paperwork to me. When I reached out to them and, I, and they said I'd have to pay a specific amount the day of. And then I found out yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, Monday, that it was a weekly pay on top of that. I let Natalie know I simply cannot afford any of that. Okay, so ma'am, here's the thing, right? You're on probation for an alcohol-related driving offense. You violated this court's terms of probation. Setting aside the diluted samples, you test a positive for alcohol. A mere two weeks after being sentenced and ordered not to consume the alcohol. So in lieu of sending you to jail, this court suspended your jail and also indicated 30 days on the alcohol tether. Your other option could be to go to jail, ma'am. So I understand you may not be working or that you're not working, but I find it extremely hard to believe that you get zero assistance from anybody that you know, exactly. or you don't have any means by which you can borrow money from somebody and pay somebody back. Not a weekly thing, no. What I was going to do with the 200 that I was going to get, because it's like a twice payment, 200 and 200, was get the tether. And I thought that that 184 was going to go ahead and take care of the whole the tether for the 30 days. So I said, okay, that's not a problem. I don't have anybody that I can borrow weekly $84 to help and then pay them back because I won't be able to pay them back, especially right away because I'm not. I have no income. I don't get any help. But um, you should be back to work within a month is what yeah, was put for. be behind in bills. I have a son that I take care of by myself. I don't get any type of assistance from his father or any anybody. It's literally me. I take care of my son. I take him to daycare. He gets to daycare. And, and who's paying for daycare? It's through the state. And how long have you been out of work? Since July. And what happened? Why are you not working? Money. At work? Yeah. When's the last time you consumed the alcohol? When I got arrested. When I got arrested. Oh, no, because you just pled guilty to a probation violation, so that's not accurate. And so if you're tested today, what's in your system? I can't hear you. What? I was saying Benadryl. I don't know if that was anything. I'm off the 
probation and I'm charged. And the judge ordered for me to be sobriety for it instead of doing another position. I don't know when that will start though. Um, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sobriety court is a voluntary treatment court. So you had to have had agreed, I, you had to agree to it. it. Yes, I agreed to it because he asked me could I afford to keep a tether. And I told him no, that I couldn't. So he asked me would I be um, going to the sobriety court. And I told the gentleman that does the sobriety court. I agreed to do that. I just don't know when that first thing starts. I asked my probation officer, and she said that if she's not assigned the case, someone will be assigned, and then I'll get like a details of how to go forward with the right foot. And when were you sentenced in that matter? Um, this was Monday. The past Monday. Next Monday. And that offense date was when? Um, 20, so, oh, but that, oh, that's right, because that case wasn't brought forth until just recently, correct? Correct. Right, so you had two pending OWIs <clears throat> simultaneously, and it's not a second offense with either one of these two because there wasn't a conviction for either one of these two. And how did you get here today? My father. And how are you going to afford the Uber? Afford the Uber? Um, I actually have the code, like a big code. Counsel, this is tough because your client, I understand that she is out of work right now, but at the same time, this court ordered her to refrain from using alcohol. Within two weeks, she violated. So instead of sending her right to jail, this court suspended five days of her jail and gave her the opportunity to get an alcohol tether. And she didn't do that. And so what am I left with? At her, um, I, I believe I represented her at her violation of uh, probation. She was forthcoming at that. If I recall correctly, she was at a get together. Someone gave her some punch. She drank it. She wasn't aware of it. Obviously that's not going to happen again. It was not only myself, but uh, we both made her very aware that she's responsible for everything she puts in her, her system. Oh, that's right. You tried saying that you weren't aware of that, but then you end up drinking a lot of the punch. So you need. Right? That's correct. Judge. You drink a whole lot of punch. Um, so she's here before you today explaining that she's in the gym. She doesn't have the money to pay for a tether. And as I've explained already, she receives $400 a month disability, and that's her soul. That's what she has to pay all her bills. So. Well, so when do you begin? You don't know when you're beginning sobriety court? No, I don't know quite yet. Hopefully, I find someone else to speak. I did reach out to my um, probation officer immediately. Any type of email or call or anything or a number that was given to me so I contact someone. But she did say that someone should be assigned to my case and then. It's not hers. Whoever is assigned will um, let me know all the information that I need to know as far as that goes. Well, Council, since your client's going to be participating in the sobriety court, perhaps I amend the sentence, quite frankly, and revoke probation, have your client serve some jail time, and be done with this court. Uh, it, as she indicated earlier, she is uh, solely responsible for her child. I, I don't see how that's going to be possible for her. Well, 
well, perhaps your parents are going to have to take care of the child for a little while. Be able to have both of my parents work full time jobs. Okay, but there's daycare. Your child's in daycare, right? I understand that, but I also just don't feel comfortable with my son. Okay, I and mean, quite frankly, I don't feel comfortable with you violating this court's order not to use any alcohol. And you did two weeks after you were sentenced for a drunk driving that you were arrested for while you were out on bond or while you had another matter pending for the same offense. So if you're not feeling comfortable with your son going to your parents' house, I don't know what to say about that. Because I try to be as accommodating as I can be. But at the end of the day, you violated this court's order. You're a danger to the public, quite frankly, with your alcohol consumption on a continuing basis. And let's not forget, when you were arrested in this manner in April, you were a 0.22. A 0.22. And I understand right now that you're, you have limited income because of your injury. But you're choosing not to utilize or attempt to utilize any financial resources that you may have. There are individuals that you could absolutely ask to borrow some money for from and pay them back in a, num in a number of months when you're back to work. But you're not exercising that option. I have, absolutely. I do not have no whatsoever. If I did, I wouldn't even have hesitated to get the other cast off. It's not happening It's literally just me taking care of my kids. Okay, but you've indicated that you have your parents. That doesn't mean that they would be real quick. Like, I certainly, they're alive, yeah, but that doesn't indicate that they're there to help me financially or anything like that. Did you ask them? I have reached out. I mean, my, both of my parents, they have their own things going on. I understand that. Other people, so did you, well. did you so ask, absolutely. did you ask them specifically for the money regarding the tether? I have asked if I would have had their own point and I wouldn't have a problem. I wouldn't be standing here today in front of you. When did you ask your parents about helping you pay for the tether? When I found out about it, I asked that I get help immediately because I didn't have any money for my own that day whatsoever. When is your surgery? October the 13th. I'm trying to get it on the so. And how did you injure your knee again? Um, someone was running, flying into me, knocking over. Have you started your um, outpatient substance use counseling? So I, um, I'm in therapy right now. And when I asked my therapist if she was a counselor, she said no. So I have been looking for one. We reached out to a few different counselors, so I'm kind of just waiting to see who's able to. Did you um, sign up for your man victim impact panel yet? I have not. It is um, now technically going to take 30 hours of community service. And how, did, and how are you doing that? So I'm working with the organization called Trade Action. I have a letter from the... I'll take a look at that, please. 
I help with organizing events, back to school things. Right. So here's you're right. This is this is a very difficult case because Ms. Gonzalez, you're claiming that you don't have the funds to pay for a tether, which the court gave you the opportunity to do in lieu of jail. You were on probation for a mere two weeks before your first violation. I'm sorry, the first violation was August 16th, which is two days later. Then the 25th was another diluted sample. And on the 28th, which was two weeks after you were sentenced, you're positive for alcohol. If you're going to be doing sobriety court, I don't know that it makes sense for you to continue with probation in this court. I would just ask that if you ran concurrent any tests that uh, she has to sobriety court, she can always send to uh, Michelle. That's what's happening now. Right. 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 All right, well, the court's going to indicate as your sentence in this matter for a body violating the court's order. The court's going to indicate five days jail. You uh, allow her to date so she could get her affairs in order and make sure that she has something off the file. You have to report tomorrow. So please stop over probation. They will give you the information as to how to report. All right, thank you. All right, off the record. <laughs> um, actually, we're going to stay on the record. Council, and ma'am, just so you're aware, right, The um, that was from your violation of your sentence for your probation violation. You still have the five days that was suspended. So this is not the suspended. This is an additional five days, just so you're aware. That jail review is still November 6th. Okay, so. And you're still on probation as of now. So, this. Uh, ending the jail? What you're saying? No. Oh, okay. Potentially, at some point, if you, depending how the jail review goes on November 6th, you may have to serve another five days. Right now, I'm indicating five days for violating this court's order regarding the tether. So I just want you to be aware that you're, as of now, you're still on probation and you still have the other five days from the probation violation this court suspended. So this five days is not that five days is what I'm trying to make sure is clear. Okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Off the record. Make sure you're stopping your probation, please. Good morning, Judge. Attorney Corey Westmoreland, appearing on behalf of Ms. Smith. Thank you. 
Ms. Smith, would you please state your name for the record? Okay, um, Ms. Smith. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, and I understand that you have pants on. However, with as much as cut off in the front of those, they're pretty much like shorts, and that's not appropriate for court. How do you have when you close, we don't have a lot of clothes. It was a late notice. It was a what? Late notice to go wash the clothes. Down. It was late notice to go wash the clothes? Yeah. What do you mean by that? I work, I don't have the time to go to the laundromat to wash. It was a late notice. The pants that I do have that's appropriate. Okay, ma'am, you've had this date set since October, since August 1st. Yeah. So you should have. You should have um, been more prepared because, quite frankly, those pants are not appropriate for court. But in any event, counsel, we stay together for sentencing on your client's plea to an amended charge of operative visibly impaired by alcohol. And you have an opportunity to review the report and recommendation with your client? That's correct, Judge. There's only one addition. Uh, uh, Ms. Smith has currently started working at Cars Done Right, so she is uh, in gainfully employed at this time. Uh, other than that, Your Honor, my client's extremely apologetic for her actions. Uh, she knows that putting herself and also the community at risk in a situation, situation such as that is unacceptable and her uh, behavior will not be duplicated. With that being said, Your Honor, I'd simply just request that the recommendation be adopted on behalf of my client. Okay, what is cars done right, ma'am? It's a car toy, like um, making sure like a car toy, remote starter, and an amplifier. Oh, an accessory. It's an aftermarket accessory. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right. All right, and so, ma'am, have you taken care of the warrants that um, that you have outstanding? Yes, um, I had got the warrants rescheduled to my credit. It's actually on the 22nd, and they're going to get dismissed because I had got my license. I just had to get my license and make sure my insurance and everything is back straight, which I did. Okay. All right, and so, ma'am, you were at a family member's home? Yes. And you felt fine to drive home? Well, I thought I slept it off because I had to jump. I think it was going to seven, seven o'clock. And then when I was it was about like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I was just trying to get home because my kids, the babysitter, didn't want to watch them eat at the long after that. Okay. Well, ma'am, it wasn't long enough. Um, and I understand that you want to um, you know, let your hair down and have some time without your kids, but I said I won't make that mistake again. I didn't know that how long liquor stays in the system. I don't drink, so I didn't know. And if you were to test the ADM or be tested, what would be detected in your system? Should be nothing. I don't know how long marijuana stayed in your system from the day that I got tested. Still positive July 18th. If this if it doesn't stay in your system at all, it should be nothing. Okay. All right. The court will indicate after hearing from counsel, hearing from um, Ms. Smith and reviewing the report and the recommendation that there is reasonable grounds to depart from NCL 769.5 court or counsel. Um, the fact that there was listed as a probation violation was an error. It's only sentencing. I figured time. as much because she hadn't been sentenced yet. So Correct. There was yes. No way she have a violation. Yes. So I'm actually going to discard this violation notice of rights because sure. while I'm glad that you read it, ma'am, and signed it, it's not applicable today. All right. The court does find that the recommendation is appropriate. 18 months probation. You are eligible for early discharge, and I'll go over that in just a short while. You're not to violate any criminal law of any unit of government. 
You can actually even state without the consent of the court. You are to report truthfully to your probation officer as often as your probation officer may require, in person, in writing, or virtually. You're to notify your probation officer immediately by any change in the address or employment status. You have to any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed to be subjected to random testing. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is so the court can monitor your progress in maintaining absence and sobriety. You will have to participate in outpatient substance use counseling. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to assist you in providing coping mechanisms so that you may maintain sobriety and prevent relapse. Can I ask you a question about that? Yes. Since I'm not injured, but I do use more of a way that I can get a facility for that? That's, that's what it's for, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. And um, so that, that's why it's the, um, it'll be based upon, it'll be geared towards your, um, the purpose that you need it for, okay? All right, the court will also indicate me to participate in the Man Victim Impact Panel. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to further increase your understanding of the dangers of driving while impaired and to educate about the consequences of such behavior. And it's also recommended in the court for an order for you to participate in a psych evaluation and any counseling if recommended. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to determine your mental health needs and provide any coping and management strategies. If after your evaluation, ma'am, it does if there's not any determination of any further treatment, then you're done. I also have a question for that. So um the therapist that my doctor subscribes to me, well suggested to me, they offer 100 per session. I want to know the court way uh pays for that or do I because my assurance don't cover. But I do want to take the therapy. Okay. So the court doesn't pay for it. Um, usually we're relying on your insurance. So coordinate that with probation and we'll see how um, there may be some low or no cost um, providers that could do that. Okay. Um, and then the court's going to, oh, I had a condition on here, but since you're already employed, I'm going to take that off. All right. The court's going to indicate community service of 80 hours, the rehabilitative goal for that condition is to help you further develop work and life skills and get back to the community. And since you are currently working, I'm not indicating anything regarding employment. Okay? And then clear up your warrants, which you're already working on. All right, anything else? Not this time, Your Honor. Okay. The court's going to indicate a $300 fine, $100 screening assessment fee, supervision oversight fee. Uh, $900, that's $50 a month at 18 months. Since you are eligible for early discharge, up to $450 of that may not be due, okay? $200 for the cost of prosecution, crime victim assessment fee of $75, justice system assessment fee of $50 for a total of $1,625. And do you have any of that to pay? Or did you post a bond? You posted a bond, right? Yes. Okay, so the balance is $450 to be applied. Do you have any other money to pay today or no? Um, no, but I could, uh, I guess you can set the payment for 15th of each month. Okay, so I will indicate $450 is applied today, and that's your bond. The balance of 1175 and up to 450 of that may not be due if you discharge early. Okay. And so on the 15th of the month, and we can begin that October 15th then. And how much per month? Um, you can do 50. Okay. All right, 50 dollars per month on the 15th of every month on the balance of eleven hundred and seventy-five dollars. All right, and ma'am, as I did indicate. You are eligible for early discharge, so long as all the following have been completed. You've had at least, you've completed at least six months, I'm sorry, you've completed at least half of your original term of probation. All probation requirements have been completed. You've had at least three months without any violations, and all monies have been either paid in full, or you've made a good faith effort to making full payment. Okay, any other questions? No, that's all. Thank all right. you. Good luck to you, ma'am. Please have a seat over probation. Somebody will be with you shortly. Thank you. All right, thank you.